I will show you a Sudoku secret that will blow your mind and how to apply it in five simple steps. And with that, it's solving time. You could solve this puzzle using traditional methods and it will require several advanced strategies to solve it logically, including X, Y chains and empty rectangles. Instead, I'm going to show you a neat way and a secret way of solving that doesn't work on most puzzles, but it'll work on this one. Greetings, friend. I want to thank Bondi for giving me this first of four puzzles that I am featured this month using set equivalence theory, also known as set. It is a Sudoku technique that most solvers do not know about, but it can make it much easier for you to solve certain puzzles. Step one is to check a puzzle for set compatibility because it only applies to a small number of puzzles. So I want you to focus on these cells right here. You notice there's a high clump of cells of given digits and it's of four different givens, a one, three, seven, and nine. Okay. These cells are contained in the columns two, three, four, and five, right? To understand set equivalence theory, you have to understand that every column contains a set of the digits one through nine. Hopefully you know that. Just like every row would contain the set of the digits one through nine, and every three by three block contains one set of the digits one through nine. So if you have four of these, this is four sets of the digits one through nine. You're going to have four ones, four threes, four fives, four sevens, four twos contained in here. Now we can use that knowledge and where they're located to see if we can force some restrictions in this puzzle. So we want to use other digits that are not one, three, seven, and nine that I showed you here. And you might see outside of the red, if you look, you'll see there's quite a bit, there's twos, sixes, eights, two, four, sixes, and eights. There's quite a few of those, plus a couple of extra digits, five and seven. So we use columns to form a larger set. So a set of four, four sets of the digits one through nine, right? So this is a larger set called the red set. Well, we're going to form a green set. And what you want to do is cover as many of the other given digits as possible because with set you're trying to apply digits from one of the colored sets to the other colored set. So I'm going to color this in green. Now you notice there's five rows that I just colored. So that means there's five sets of the digits one through nine in the green, right? We can eliminate anything that appears in both the red and the green. And Hopefully it's pretty obvious for you because it's the same digit. You know, this five is the same in the red as it is in the green. Whatever these digits are, they're going to be exactly the same. And so there's no other information we can deduce from that. Whatever's in this red set right there, the same as the green. The other thing is you'll notice since we have five rows of green and four columns of red, there's a mismatch. So what can you do about that? Because we ideally like to have the same amount. Well, you may notice in the green, you have this whole block, which that block is a set of the digits one through nine. If you eliminate that, you eliminate the digits one through nine. We don't know what these other five digits are. I mean, we know they have to be one, two, four, eight, and nine. We don't know in which cells, but we can eliminate that. And now you have four sets of the digits one through nine in the green and four in the the red. So we have an equivalent amount of digits to consider. And this is the beauty of set equivalence theory. So step two is divide these groups of numbers into two sets where the given digits are predominantly in one of two of the colored sets. So the reason I chose these is you'll notice there's mostly in, in the red you have the digits one, three, seven, nine. So that's one colored set. And in the green, you have two, four, six, and eight. You do want different givens to be clumped up into the colored sets. That will make it work. And if it is uneven, let's say you had, you know, five and one and four, you know, there are some ways of solving where you have to add or remove certain digits. And I can cover that in another 
video. But this brings me up to the question of the day. Have you ever tried to solve a puzzle with set before? Please, please, please share that in the comments with me and the other viewers. Help me grow the best Sudoku community on YouTube. I love getting comments like this from my viewers and I would love to hear from you. So step two now is we're gonna add digits to the empty cells of each set. And why can I do that? Why can you do that? Count how many given digits are in the green. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight digits, the two twos, the two fours, the two sixes, and the two eights have to be somewhere in this red set, the red color set, right? Because we said that it's an equivalent digits from the green and the red. And since what you see are one, three, seven, nine, how many empty cells do you have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Since you have eight empty cells and you have eight given digits in the green that don't match anything in the red, you know these eight digits have to be two, four, six, and eight. And in fact, you can be more, more specific. It's got to be two twos, two fours, two sixes, and two eights. These green digits have to be somewhere in the red. They have to be. Conversely, you'll notice there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight digits in the red, all of the digits one, three, seven, and nine. How many empty squares do we have in the green? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And there's no repeats between what's in the red and the green as far as the one, three, seven, nine are not represented anywhere else in the green set. So these eight digits have to be those one, three, seven, nine. They gotta be somewhere in the green. They're gonna be in those squares. This is the beauty of set equivalence theory. Now you've made a ton of eliminations in the red cells and the green cells by adding those givens. And so now step four is to trim the cells. And so we're gonna remove anything that doesn't belong in there by looking at the actual givens. And we can actually remove all the colors. We've applied set. Normally you will apply set right at the beginning of the puzzle. Sometimes you can solve a few digits first, but we didn't need to in this case. And so by trimming, we're just going to look and see where we have re normal restrictions. So you might notice with this 2-4 in column 6 and this 2-4 across row 1, 2-4 are a hidden pair right here. The 2 and 4 can only fit in these two cells. Okay. With the 6 and 8 cutting across row 6, this 6 and 8 coming up, column 1, the 6 and 8 are a hidden pair that go right there. The 6 and 8 got to be somewhere in block 4. They only fit in those two cells. You might notice with this 1, 9 here and this 1, 9 here that these cells cannot contain a 1 or a 9. they got to be a 3, 7. And with this 3, 7 here and 3, 7 here, these cells cannot contain a 3 or 7. they just got to be a 1 or a 9. Okay, so we've done some trimming here, and now it's to step five. Step five, we've applied set. You've applied the equivalent digits. Now it's just to solve normally. And hopefully, by doing this, you've bypassed several of the harder strategies that we normally need to solve this puzzle. Let's see how far you can go without getting stuck. You might notice with these two fours, you can solve this cell for a four. And that was there the whole time. And with this four, only two places for a four right here. So I will mark that when there's only two possibilities in a three by three block to help with the solving. And then with this four coming up, now you know this can't be a four, you have a pointing pair of fours right here in block four. So the fours are restricted in block four to column one. So a four can't be anywhere else outside of the block in that column. So you can't have a four there. And because of this four, you can't have a four here and because of this four, you can actually solve this cell now for a four. And what does that do for us? Now this has to be a two and that's gotta be a four. And then you may notice with these two fours, and you got these fours here, we're gonna forego in row six, right? It can't be here because of this four, it can't be here because of set, so it's gotta be right there. And so we can remove the fours from here and you can remove this two that we have placed. And so this makes a nice six, eight pair right there. 
And now you might see with this five cutting across row seven and this five coming down, there's only one place for a five in block seven. So you can solve that. And then with these two fives and this five, you can solve for a five in block eight. And now you can look with these two sixes and you can solve this cell for a six because you know five or six can't be in either one of those cells. And this six allows you to disambiguate the eight and the six right there, which allows you to solve this cell now for an eight. And that's just going to be a two, six. You see how this is working? And now you can look at these two fives and with this five, two places for a five in block one. Now come over here into column four. You'll notice there's seven digits filled out. You just need a one and a seven. Well, with this seven, that's got to be a seven and that's got to be your one. And then with these two sevens and this seven, you can solve for a seven right there. And then with this one, you can solve for a one right there. Nice. And now with the one here and here, you got three places for a one right there. Can't do that solving yet. Now, if you look right here, what can this cell be? You have, looks like a two, six, and a seven in column two. Well, with these two sevens, this has got to be your seven. And then with this six, that's got to be your two, and that's going to be your six. Awesome. And so now with this two and these twos, you can solve for two here, displacing that five. And with the seven, you can solve this cell now for a three in the corner. Bum, bum, bum. Allows you to finish this block with an eight. You notice how this eight cuts across and creates a pointing pair of eights in block six. Now to go with this eight and the eight right here, only place to put an eight in block eight is right there. And that's going to allow you to remove the eight from that cell. You got just a two six there. But we're not done. With this 3, 7, you might notice this can no longer be a 3 and a 7. So you have a 1, 9 naked pair to go along with the 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. That means a 6 has to be right there. And then with that 6 means this has to be your 2. And you might notice you have two 2s, two 4s, two 6s, and two 8s all in that set. Awesome. All right, let's continue on with the solving. And you might see here that you have a one, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, and you need a three and a nine to finish this column. And you got the nine right there. So here's your three, here's your nine, and that's going to be your three. And now with these two threes, you can solve this cell for a three, and you're just going to have a two, nine naked pair right there. Easy. I'll mark that. And something kind of cool going on here. With this 3, you can solve that for a 7, which means this cannot be a 3 or a 7 anymore. And so you have a 1, 9, and a 1, 9 right there. Well, that's a 1, 9 naked pair, right? 1 and 9, the only two digits that can be in those two cells in column 8. So a 1 and an 8, 1 and a 9 got to be in one of those cells. So they cannot be anywhere else along the column. So they can't be here. So where can the 1, 9 go in block 9? It has to be right here. That's the only two places to fit. So that's a 1, 9 hidden pair. And a hidden pair acts as a pointing pair. Since a 1 and 9 got to be one of these two cells, that's going to be your 2, and that's going to be your 9. Nice. And then with this 8, means this has to be an 8, and that's going to be your 2. Awesome. So we'll remove these colors, and we'll kind of keep looking in column 8 here. Because of the 1, 9 naked pair, you just have a 3, 5, 7 left. You can use that these two threes right here I mean this has to be your three. And you see right here, because of this six, that has to be a six, and that's going to be a five. And so now the five can only go here in column eight, and this has to be your seven. Nice. And you want to look across row two. You have a two, four, five, six, seven, nine. We need a one, three, and an eight. Well, I got the three and the eight looking at this cell, and the three looks at that one. Neat naked triple trick. That's got to be your one. The only place the three can go is right there, and this is going to be your eight. Awesome. And now with this one, that's got to be a one, and that's going to be your nine, which forces a nine right here in block three. And now you can solve that for a one, solve that for a nine. I love gobbling up these marks as we get through the solve. With this one, we can disambiguate the one nine here 
in block nine. And now with these nines and this nine, you can solve this for a nine, displacing that four, allowing you to displace this four and solve this cell for a four. And you can see this is all normal solving that we're doing, nothing too hard here after we applied set equivalence theory. With these ones, that's gotta be a one. Got a full house across row four, just missing a five. So you mark the five right there. I don't see a two in block six, so that's gotta be a two. And you look up here and I don't see an eight or a seven, so I'm gonna pull that eight up. Here's your eight and our last digit is a seven. Now, apply what you just learned to this next puzzle by Bondi. Thank you so much for watching.